Hey guys, this is Al Bosco. Welcome back to another video. In the last video, we ranked the songs off of Led Zeppelin's self-titled debut release in 1969. Now we're going to be getting to their sophomore release, Led Zeppelin 2, which is just incredible. And uh, in my opinion, I actually like this album more than uh, their debut, although the debut was awesome. I like this just a little bit more. I think it's somewhere in my top uh, 30 favorite albums of all time. Uh, somewhere in there, I don't know, but... To me, this is just a really incredible album, and th and for me, this album really set, well, I really love their debut album a lot. Their debut album kind of set them on the map. I guess if you're a diehard fan of the debut album, then in your opinion, uh, that album set the map for them, but for me, and again, I still love the debut album, this album is, in my opinion, even better, and uh, just like on the debut, there's nine songs on here. And I love every single song on this album, but something has to be at the bottom. And out of all the albums that I ranked the songs off of for Led Zeppelin, uh, this was probably the most difficult, along with um, Led Zeppelin 4, Houses of the Holy, uh, and Physical Graffiti, somewhere ar um, along those albums also. Uh, I really love this album a lot. And this is one of my favorite albums of all time, like I said. And... Again, uh, this is very difficult to rank, so let's just get into this. And I know there's probably going to be, um, uh, you know, uncommon, or not uncommon, but, well, yeah, I guess uncommon. Uh, well, I mean, like, interesting opinions from me towards regular Zeppelin fans. And uh, especially one of them, but we'll get there when we get there. But um, there are nine songs on here, and again, I love every song on the album, but something has to be at the bottom. So let's get into this. Coming in at number 9 for me, uh, which I still love this song a lot. I can listen to this song anytime. I, I actually never knew there was a gong in the beginning of this song, the Lemon Song. A very, very silly song also. Uh, but I really love um, the the blues riff in the beginning. It's so awesome. Uh, and then after that, the bass comes in and, um, you know, John Bonham's drumming is incredible as always. And, um, yeah, it's really a perfect song. Uh, Robert Plant does a great job on here also on vocals. Uh, yeah, it's just another really great song. Uh, but it's my least favorite on, um, Led Zeppelin 2. Probably always has been, I'm not sure. But I've always loved it a lot. So that's, uh, coming in at number 9 for me is the Lemon song. Coming in at number 8. Now, number 8 and number 7 really go in, go together, so I can't really, uh, separate them when I rank this. Kind of like with... Sgt. Pepper's the only hard school band, and with a little help from my friends, as well as We Will Rock You and We Are the Champions for Queen, uh, and, you know, many others. Um, but number eight for me is Living Loving Maid, She's Just a Woman. This is a really great song, and Jimmy Page said, uh, himself said this is the worst Led Zeppelin song. I'm like, really? This is a great song. I l uh, and the riffs on here are killer. I love Robert Plant's vocals. They're... One of the highlights of the song, in my opinion. I really love his vocals. Um, the bass is awesome, and uh, John Bonham's drumming is just, again, you can't really go wrong with Bonzo, because he he was the master. And definitely been my top three favorite drummers of all time. I don't know who my favorite is. It's either him, Ringo, or Neil Peart, one of those three, I don't know. But, um, but yeah, Living Loving Made She's Just a Woman, a great song. All right, now I'm probably going to get some flack uh, for this um, and uh, at number seven. And I know a lot of people will probably rank this higher. I love this song to death. I can listen to it anytime. One of my favorite guitar riffs of all time. One of my favorite guitar intros, Heartbreaker. I know I'm going to get a lot of flack, but um, it's just my opinion. I really love uh, his, again, Robert Plant's vocals uh, are amazing on here. And uh, I love... Again, the guitar, Jimmy, again, Jimmy Page, another phenomenal guitarist. Uh, the bass is just stupendous, and the drumming is, again, John Bonham. I, how can you not love it? The drumming is so cool. I, I, I remember trying to play this on drums before. It's pretty cool to play on drums. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, again, probably uh, um, a controversial choice to put Heartbreaker at number seven. I know a lot of, a lot of people would probably put it higher. I still love it. Um, but for me, it's at number seven. So coming in at number, uh, seven, 
going to be Heartbreaker, even though I love it. I also wanted to mention for uh, Living Loving Mate, She's Just a Woman. I really like Robert Plank's vocals at the end where he goes, it's so cool. I always thought it was funny. But uh, yeah, that's just something I wanted to mention. So, where were we? Oh yeah, coming in at number six, another great song that, again, probably most fans would probably have this higher. Uh, I can't argue, because this is a great song, criminally underrated, too. What is and what should never be. Um, an incredible, mellow song. Uh, I love it a lot. And, you know, I love how the songs, the, the how this song is quiet, and then they get rocking, like, seconds later. And Bonham's drumming is the same. Does that, that, lo that like, ballad-type drumming where he has... The, the stick on the right stick on the right symbol and he he's has the left stick on the snare drum but uh he hits he holds it so he, it hits the rim and when they get into the rocking section it's still the same thing um but I, that's one of my favorite parts of the song I also love the the, the guitar in it it's just incredible uh and the lyrics are uh, one of my favorite Led Zeppelin song lyrics uh easily. I've always loved the lyrics on the song, and I've always loved the song, and that's what is and what should never be coming in at number six. Again, could rank higher in the future, but right now, it's going to be at number six. Coming in in the top five, or we're in the top five, I should say, but coming in at number five, one of my favorite album closers of all time, one of my favorite blues songs of all time, you know what it is, Bring It On Home. Again, you know, with the... Uh, plagiarism thing. Oh, yeah, I should have said so with the, um, the Lemon song also. But uh, Bring It On Home is just a great song. I've always loved um, this song. Uh, I love the, the you know, the bass in the beginning. It's just awesome. And, you know, the harmonica is awesome. And, uh, you know, Robert Plant's interesting vocals. Like, I don't know how he got they got it to sound like that, but it's awesome. And after a minute and a half of that intros over you get some of the best instrumentation i've ever heard in music the guitar riff of, on bring on home is one of my favorite the awesome i love it a lot and i remember watching um the song remains the same live uh uh live video concert wherever it is somewhere over there in the uh dvd collection but I remember uh, they would play that guitar riff before Black Dog, before they would play Black Dog. I always thought it was cool. Uh, but that's uh, Bring It On Home coming in at number five. And at the end, they end it awesome with, um, you know, Robert Plant just going with the harmonica. I can't make harmonica sounds. Uh, but that's Bring It On Home coming in at number five. Coming in at number four, another great song, which is... Um, a, a, a huge fan favorite uh, for most uh, people, uh, for most sub fans. Ramble On. I've always loved Ramble On. I love the beginning. Robert Plant's vocals are some of my favorite. I love Ramble On. I love that. And the guitar is awesome. Bonham's drumming is just incredible, also. And I really love, uh, you know, the bass is incredible, also. So, uh, what more is there to say but awesome? It's a great. It is an incredible song. I love Ramble On, so, and I'm rambling on by r talking by... Ra you know what I mean. I'm rambling on by rambling about Ramble On. But I don't know what I... You know what I mean. But that's Ramble On coming in at number four. Alright, so top three. Now, coming in at number three, I know I'm going to get a lot of flack. How could he have Heartbreaker at number seven and, you know, this at uh, number three? It's just my, first of all, it's my opinion. Uh, please feel free to share your opinions in the comments below. I'm sure you like this also. I mean, uh, now I, now there's a reason why I love this song so much. It's not really a song, but you, you know what I'm talking about now, though. I'm a percussionist, a drummer, and, uh, I always love drum solos in songs. So, there, if there would be one, there would be a drum solo that would rank high, if you had a drum solo on an album, like a classic rock album, and if you uh, told me um, that there's going to be a drum solo and you should rank the songs off of the album, chances are it could rank high, uh, especially with this. Uh, coming in at number three, Moby Dick, named after um, uh, the novel uh, Moby Dick. But 
I love this guitar solo. I remember trying to play. I remember trying to play Moby Dick. There's no way I can do it. Bonham can do it well because he was incredible. Bonham, rest in peace. You were awesome. But uh, no, I lo again the guitar riff in the beginning is awesome, and the guitar uh, the guitar riff in the outro, and uh, I love um, Bonham's fills at the end of the song. But that that drum solo and he was playing and i remember the song remains the same you got to see him he, he was like forget the drumsticks i'm just gonna play with my hands like bongos it was insane uh and i was like wow he can do whatever the hell he wants because he's john bonham for crying out loud but that's moby dick coming in at number three that's my little story why uh i would drink drum solos high because i'm a drummer myself uh but i love moby dick and i know a lot of you led zeppelin fans love it probably would rank that at the bottom but I have a huge soft spot for this song. But the top two are just incredible. Because we have two songs left. And they are just... Well, one of them is definitely in the top ten. But another one, I don't know. Definitely probably in my top 20 somewhere. Number two, you know, if I ever get married... Th uh, this is a song I would want at my wedding. Um, I really love this song. Either this or maybe another one, I don't know. But uh, coming in at number two, thank you. This is just... A gorgeous song, one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard. Robert Plant's vocals. This is about his wife Maureen, uh, well, wife at the time Maureen. Before I, I believe they divorced or something like that, uh, which is sad, unfortunately. But um, yeah, "Thank You" is a really beautiful song. I've always loved it, and I've always had a huge soft spot for it. I love the organ. I love the guitar in the beginning. I've always loved this song a lot. So yeah, if I ever get married, that'll be that'll that'll be a choice uh, for a wedding song for me anyway. But my favorite song on Led Zeppelin too, and I know a lot of people um, would also agree with me uh, after <laughs> after some controversy. But number one for me, what other song can it be other than a whole lot of love? I mean, the incredible opener, uh, that guitar riff in the beginning is phenomenal. I I really really love the bass in the beginning. Uh, also, um, and then, you know, Robert Plant's iconic vocals in the song, that you just can't go wrong with this song, uh, it's one of my favorite songs, and then that, you know, those drum, I guess you can call the drum solo in the, in the middle of the song, you know, it's really just the hi-hat that he's going, and then, you know, he's just, I guess he's hitting the bell on, uh, some of the crash cymbals or, or what have you, um, and then, and then the infamous part of the song where Robert Plant makes noises, um, yeah, those noises, we're not going to talk about it on his channel, because it's family-friendly, but I've always loved this song, definitely my favorite on the album, definitely in my top 10 favorite Van, uh, Led Zeppelin songs, I almost said Van Halen songs, top 10 Led Zeppelin songs, um, and I've always loved it a lot, so, that's a whole lot of love coming in at number one, and that is my list, now I, now I get to show you guys what my list looks like, only in case if you forgot, even though that was 13 minutes and 15 seconds ago. This is the times there. Anyway, that was Led Zeppelin 2. Strong album. I I've always loved Led Zeppelin 2. Um, definitely my favorite at this point. Um, I've always... Uh, well, I mean, Led Zeppelin 1, again, that's awesome. But Led Zeppelin 2 is just... It really hits close to home because this is a, an incredible album. Uh, and I've always loved it, and I always will love it. But, the next album we're going to be uh, reviewing, or, or ranking, I should say, is going to be Led Zeppelin's third album, Led Zeppelin 3. They're going to go into Led Zeppelin 85, no, I'm kidding. Um, but, uh, yeah, Led Zeppelin 3 is going to be the next one released in 1970, another great album. Uh, and um, one of the less popular uh, albums by them, I, I always... Uh, viewed Led Zeppelin 3 as the underrated gem in their discography. I mean, if you exclude of the first six albums, that that especially and that and Houses of the Holy especially are underrated. Um, but I really love Led Zeppelin 3, and that's what we'll do. To, uh, hopefully tomorrow. Uh, hopefully, uh, I can bring you guys that video tomorrow. Uh, and I know my hair's a mess. You probably look and get a haircut or something like that. I will in I will in the future. Calm down. But anyway, that was Led Zeppelin 2. Uh, please leave a like, comment if you want, view my videos, and of course subscribe, and hit the bell. Thanks for watching this video, guys. This has been Halbuska, signing off. Stay safe.